everybody and welcome back to another hobby cheating video and this is sort of a part two and in line with the Vallejo uh, liquid gold product review that I also had. Um, I'll put a link of course so you can go over to that if you didn't see that yet. But you'll notice here that uh, I had painted this in that video and I've finished putting the gold on. Obviously I'm recording this right after as my finger still has the gold on it. and. Um, but I very quickly finished up the rest of the gold, you know, went around all the edges, basically picked out all the things that I wanted to be gold. Um, so they've all been coated with the Vallejo liquid gold, old gold. Now, here's what I'll say. I showed you in the product review how you can basically work with it. You need to use your isopropyl alcohol to thin your, um, to thin your Vallejo liquid gold paint, okay? and uh, that's also what you need to use to clean your brush and it's also what you're going to need to use to get the paint nice and thin for us to do what we're going to do next. So what I'm gonna walk you through in this is um, my method for highlighting and you know, sort of layering and, and glazing. Um, I'm gonna kind of do a little of all of them. It's really tough to glaze with, so we're gonna really be doing more of layering um, with the Vallejo Liquid Gold series. And we're gonna be talking about how to achieve extreme contrast on your gold, and also how to work with this stuff. So, if you remember my, my guide in the first one was my own ring. So let's actually turn this wheel like this. And this is what's fun about these wheels. They're like the same size, right? Okay, so let's see if I can get that to stick there. Okay, so now one thing, my, my ring is like very polished, so it's actually, you know, reflecting other surfaces that are down here. But what you'll notice is the point of light is actually pretty similar. Like it's already kind of reflecting that point of light, right? The issue is we don't have our darks dark enough, especially not when you consider the size this thing is supposed to be. And that's the trick. It's pretty close to my ring, but my ring isn't to scale. This wheel isn't really this size, right? This wheel is representing something far larger than itself. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to apply our old friend, Seraphim Sepia. Um, I like the way that this works and interacts with the uh, old gold color. Um, you could also use like a Reichland flesh shade or something like that really just depends on kind of how what tone you want your your gold to be um, now as a brief bit of warning one of this one of the wonderful things about the old gold or about the Vallejo liquid gold is that it is incredibly shiny the second you do this and you put this wash over it your shine is gone okay because a wash is very dirty and what it's going to do is it is going to knock the shine right out of this thing. So um, one thing you can do is if you know a part is going to be very, very, very highlighted, you can just go ahead and not put that over there. Um, if you know something is so thin that it's not really going to have a large amount of, uh, of, of different color variation to it or it doesn't have a lot of depth or something like that, you can just go ahead and not wash that. You don't necessarily have to do everything, but I, I tend to like to do most of the stuff um, just because I feel like it does add a richness to it um, when you do it and highlight it back up. But the concept here is pretty straightforward. We're going to, basically what we want to do is we want to push contrast. So the first and most important thing I'll say is that um, when you can do this, the, the, a lot of the techniques I'm going to cover here, you could do with any with any gold, okay? I just think it happens to work best with the Vallejo liquid gold because they're so bright, okay? And because their coverage is so solid for the base coat and so smooth. So, you know, you really could use and port a lot of these techniques to whatever gold paint you're using, but I think my question in the end would be, you know, why? Why are you using those other paints? Um, you're just your gold is never going to be as good. In the end, these are annoying to work with. As I said during my product review, you know they're kind of a pain in the butt. I'm not going to lie, but they're worth it for the end result. 
But if you don't feel like putting up with the pain, I understand. It's all right. As Deadpool would say, you're not in for maximum effort. I get it. That's fine. Um, so, all you can see that basically what I'm doing is very simple here. I'm just washing it down, right? I mean, I'm not doing anything incredibly complicated here in technique. I'm only letting it, I'm not really letting it pool in any big spaces except like in some cracks, maybe at the top of these little things just to create some some differentiation, but for the most part I'm pretty much just washing in a pretty normal fashion. Just kind of coating everything, letting it just cover over, soak into all the deep recesses, especially around these skulls and stuff like that. So for this first one, we're really going to keep it pretty straightforward. You know, nothing too tricky. Like I said, one of the issues here is that as soon as you put this stuff on, you're going to knock the shine right out of your stuff. And you'll see that as it dries, which it will do fairly quickly. Um, we're not going to have to wait too long on this step. But I, do, I wanted to make sure I showed it to you before I did this step so that you could see just how crazy bright it is. Okay. So, we've got our Seraphim Sepia applied, and now we just basically, we're going to, you know, we let that dry. But you can see already how much less reflective that is. Like, look at where it's dried on the back of the wheel, right? And how much less bright that is than, say, the top there, where I didn't put any wash right here. So look at the, how that much reflects compared to how that reflects, right? Instantly, I knocked the shine right out of this thing. So, which is fine. That's what we're aiming at doing. That's what we wanted to have happened, right? So now we've got our wash over everything. It's drying pretty quick. Um, and so we're just going to go to our next step. We'll talk to you the next step. The first wash is really just to kind of add some richness to the tone. And then comes in the magic, which is the Vallejo Game Ink Sepia. Now, you can do this with just Seraphim Sepia, but really you need some kind of ink. Um, I like the Game Ink one. You could use whatever you wanted. Um, P3 makes an ink in this color. Um, Scale 75 makes an ink in this color. It really doesn't matter. It's whatever you like. I just happen to like the tone of this. So, um, I'm going to take my Sepia ink. I just threw it onto this palette I'm working here because this is an easier palette for um, for the gold, so it's just simpler to, you know, do that as the, the to do the whole thing through this. And now I'm gonna grab my brush. I'm gonna get it really wet because I want to have I want to have this ink watered down some because it's really thick. Like this ink is just super thick and very dark, and that's okay. That's what we want. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to specifically only apply this ink on the parts that would be completely blocked from the light. So like here up under the wheel, right? Like under this axle here, up under here, right? What I'm trying to do is actually create sort of the real reflection points. Light wouldn't be getting up under this thing because it's, it's sitting... You know, that's this under here is literally the opposite of where the light is shining down. So we want to make sure we capture that. Um, do I like to, I like, you know, you create just some interesting color transitions. These chariots are always interesting because like it's not, a lot of this is fairly thin and so you don't have a huge uh, ability to go too deep on it. You know, if this was like a bigger model, I would have some more space to actually do this stuff with. Um, but these little tiny wheels are funny. But I'm getting like the undersides, right, of each of the little spokes. The part where the light wouldn't hit. Here on the skulls, I'm just going to go ahead and get the undersides of the skulls underneath there. And then I'm going to just sort of do the bottom here. What I'm doing here is just kind of an enforced, you know, shading, right? I mean, I'm just shading it purposely with the ink. I'm really taking it down where the color would be the absolute darkest because that part is going to be in shadow. 
and hence it shouldn't be reflective at all. In fact, gold, when it's not in the light, is quite dark. So that's what we're trying to create. As you can see, this is a fairly quick step. It really doesn't take long because, you know, I'm just doing little tiny touches to enforce this, these heavier shadows. You might go over it a couple times if you really want to push it. Oops. Whatever the case. There we go. Okay. And then maybe you really want, really, really want to make those creases nice and deep, like the cracks here. So I'll just kind of touch it, let it flow in there. Okay. So we just really, really want to get that in there nice and strong so that that ridge line really stands out and don't worry we'll clean like obviously I'm painting with a fairly large brush here so it's obvious that it's you know I'm spilling over on the sides and stuff like that and that doesn't matter we're gonna fix that all in a minute this little guy does not want to stay on here okay so we just move around we get under all of our little skulls at the bottom, so many little skulls, because this model is from Games Workshop, so there's skulls everywhere, of course. Alright, but effectively what we've done now is we've created these really dark shadows. Alright, okay. So now you can see here, we really brought this down. It's not very pretty at this point, and that's okay, we don't want it to be. Alright, here on the wheel, you can see how the underside is very dark, whereas the top is still quite bright. And that's what we want, right? We want to create these, these sort of shadows. You can really see it on the wheels, right? Where we've got the higher high here, and then it goes dark right here underneath. Now we're going to smooth out some of these transitions. That's the next step. Okay. But we just want to make sure we're in a place that we like. That where we feel like we've gotten all of the all the little areas that should be hidden in shadow once we feel good about that then we're good to go okay so there we go we've uh i'll get the front of the wheel a little more the wheels are really a great example here probably the best thing to, that's going to show this off on this model because they're round and they're obviously going to interact with the light in interesting ways. Okay. So, there we go. So, now let's get back to our Vallejo Liquid Gold. All right. So, let's talk about... I already showed you in the product review video how you can just paint with these, but now we're going to really get into it. Okay, so again, what's the first thing we do with these? We shake them, shake them, shake them, shake them, shake them. Just like crazy. Just, I mean, shake them until you think you've shaked way too much, and then shake them for another, you know, more. All right? These things really need to be mixed, and they really like to not be mixed. So, there we go. All right. So, we're going to have two colors here. And I'm actually going to start, not with the old gold that I did, but I'm going to start with the silver. Now, in the product review video, I mentioned the silver is actually rather limited. Because the, the reality is, I far prefer to just use like the Vallejo acrylic metal color silver if I'm gonna do steel paints. And this silver is so bright. It's so bright, you can see, if you look in there, that's how that should look when it's healthy. So I'm just gonna dump some of that in my palette here. That's probably enough. Wipe off my edge. Always wanted to, always wanna keep the edges nice and clean. And then we're gonna seal that nice and tight always as I said store it upside down once you've sealed it nice and clean take our alcohol 91% isopropyl alcohol 90% or better um, and this time I am gonna put just a little too much in there and this time it's on purpose because what we're gonna do is we've purposefully thinned our uh, our our Vallejo liquid gold down because one of the interesting things you can do with this suspension is you can actually layer with it and get it to thin because the pigment in this is so hyper fine okay 
So like here on my thumb, I've got this brown. You can get it down to a thinner way. This has got some pretty strong coverage. So like right there, I mean, look at that. Look at how much that covered that over. That's probably still a little thick. So now we know, okay, we need to take that down some more. Because what we're gonna do with this is we're going to create our points of light on our gold, okay? And I'm using pure silver for that at this stage in the same way that I undershade. Uh, if you've seen you know, the previous hobby cheatings on undershading, we're gonna use the same techniques here. So for example, on the top of the wheel, I'm gonna take that silver and I'm gonna go over it like that, okay? So now I have two big bright spots of silver and that's all right, it's gonna look really stark at first. We want it to look really stark. I'm gonna trace some lines there. The idea here being at every little point of light, and this one's especially fun since it's got a lot of rounded edges. So like on the edge of this thing, right? The reality is this silver is the most reflective in the line. And if you remember when we compared it with, you know, like my ring, my ring wasn't uniformly colored, right? You can see how it catches the light and it creates those points of light. Well, we're gonna do the same thing here. So like on the tops of the skulls, on the edges, we're just gonna pick those out. In the same way we would normally paint skulls, you know, going for like the cheeks, the edge of the nose, and the ridge of the, the top of the head, right? And the eyebrows. You know, we're gonna do all that, just cover those right over in much the same way that we would do any normal highlighting. Basically, we're going for a very extreme highlight in this first step, okay? Because remember, this is just after the wash. I didn't go back to my base color and, and apply any kind of layers. I just jumped straight in here, okay? And that was on purpose. Because I what I'm doing right now is really marking out where I want my highest highlights to be, right? So I'm only touching what will eventually be the highest highlights, and I'm using this silver because it's so extreme of a transition. And then what we're gonna do in the next step is we're gonna come back with a very thinned down gold, and we're gonna turn this back. And the way the gold looks over the heavily washed other gold will be very different than the way the thinned gold works over the uh, over the uh, over the bright silver. Okay, so so what are we doing? We're just picking out every little highlight, right? We want to probably get the edge of the wheel. We want to get the top of this thing here. You know, the top of these. This little screw, probably the rear, the spoke that's the most in the light that would catch it at the most direct angle, probably the edge of those. Just to get that nice and bright. Do the same to the other side. Little edge highlight. Little edge highlight. You know, just quick stuff. It doesn't need to be perfect. And that's one of the reasons I like undershading, okay? Because when you highlight like this, you don't need to be perfect you'll have a chance to correct it later. Really what you're doing is you're just sort of making the map for how you're gonna highlight it total. And in the next step, you can come in and really clean up and get it to where you want. Okay. There's a lot of little tiny gold on this. We want to make sure we get all of it. All right, so you can see it's thin, but it still has pretty good coverage. And that's what we want. Oh, that sucks. That's all right. Got a little tiny amount on the blue. We can probably fix that later. Okay. As I said before, if you get that on your normal paint, yeah, it's, it's pretty much on your normal paint now. Fortunately, it's so thin, I can probably clean it up relatively easily. All right. So 
Sorry. It was out of frame, and this is so bright, it's like reflecting like crazy. Okay, so there we go. We've got our extreme highlights. We're going to clean off our brush here and our alcohol medium, right? And you can see I had my gold way thinned down. Or sorry, my silver, my liquid silver, way thinned down. And what I did is I just charted out where I wanted my extreme highlights to be. So you can see there on the wheels where now I have the silver. So now we have this very bright, we have normal gold, and we have this. It's a lot like just blocking in the colors. But now we're going to bring it all together. And we're going to do that by returning back to our base color of Vallejo Liquid Gold Old Gold. In this, just the amount of time I let it sit there, I'm going to reshape this again because, yes, it really is that insane. As I said, they're fun to work with. It's a challenge. That's okay. The results are stunning. So we're going to pour a little of that out. Again, we clean off the edge and see that drip there. We don't want that. That's the kind of thing that's going to gum up and prevent this from getting a good seal and ruin your paint. Nice, tight seal. Store it upside down. Now we're going to take our alcohol. It's just 91% isopropyl alcohol. We're going to thin that way down. Okay. Grab my synthetic brush. Mix that up. In this case, I am mixing it with the brush because I don't care. These brushes are cheap and synthetic and garbage, so who cares if I kind of am rough on them? They're going to die anyways doing this. Now here's the test. You tested the silver. Run the gold over it. If you can still see the silver underneath, which I can, you've thinned it appropriately. That's the way you know. In fact, I'm going to do just another drop because that was still just a bit thick. Okay. All right, so we got our gold nice and thin now. So now, there we go. So now what we want to do is we're going to take our highlights, and we're just going to kind of, and the lowlights, and we're just going to kind of go over the edges of both. And we're just going to smooth out those lines. Same thing over here. So here where we've got the highest silver, I'm just kind of dragging across the edge down into where I had the sepia, right? And then I'm just going to repeat this all over the model. And you'll notice if I've thinned it down enough, it doesn't completely cover the silver. It still stays quite bright. So here, I'm going to go ahead and trace some of this square that's not in shadow. And you can see the difference between that and where... So here's the silver skull. Let's see if we can get that in there. There we go. So when I paint this area versus this, you can see the silver still shows and we get a really, really bright skull distinction there. That's why we did the silver first. We effectively undershaded our metal tone. So we're only leaving a tiny, tiny bit, if any, of the pure silver showing. Usually we're just covering it completely because gold doesn't really highlight true silver it highlights to a very high amount of reflectivity. And so we're using a bright silver to kind of create that illusion, but we're still covering it with this very thin gold so that that way it's just an ultra reflective gold color, not actually silver. And I think that's part of the key. When a lot of people layer up, the, with especially with metallics, I think the last thing a lot of people do is go to a silver. The problem with that is that that's not really how gold looks. Um, my ring doesn't ever turn silver. It's always gold. It just sort of becomes white gold. And so that's what we're representing here. Okay. And we're just kind of repeating the same thing. I'm smoothing the edges. 
you know, recreating some of this shine we knocked out. But by doing it through this ultra thin layer, we leave the richness of the tone behind and we create these transitions. So that that way there's a little more color variation, there's a little more tonal variation in what we're doing. And it's going to pop a lot more. One of the, as I've said in previous hobby cheatings, the key to something standing out is not how bright it is, but how bright everything around it is. So contrast, as always, is king. Right? And so what we're aiming at here is to have some very, very dark darks and some very, very light lights. And by that, we're going to make this, the, the bright, almost silver, pop even more. Okay? Sorry, I keep going out of frame on this stupid flag. Okay. So, that's most of it. I think that's pretty much, I got these little front pieces here still. There's so many little tiny bits of gold on this. So we're just getting them all. Just making sure that we've blended together the shadows we created with the silver highlight. Now, if we feel like anything is still messy, we can clean it up. If we feel like we didn't get enough shine into something, we can just go over it again with another thin layer. And if we feel like we took too much highlight out of something, then we can always bring it back up again. So for example, if I wanted to, if I felt like the wheels didn't have enough of a, a shine or a transition, I can take some of that silver grab just a little bit of, or sorry, some of that gold, grab a little bit of my silver, get a good mid-tone, and just kind of go over it. In the same way you would normally make a 50-50 sort of mix of your paints, you can do it between this gold and this silver. That's why I think these are really the two colors that are the most essential, the liquid gold, old gold, and the silver. If I was just gonna get two of them, these would be my two, because these two are my workhorses. These two, by far, do the most work on my painting table. Now, that's partially, of course, because I happen to like the look of the, the color that they produce. You may find your own, you know, your mileage may vary, and you may find your own particular type of, uh, of gold that you like, but for my money, that's the one. All right. And so we can just keep kind of touching, going back and forth just little bits if we feel like we want to catch a little more highlights. Again, that dumb flag every time. Okay. All right? And so now what we've got is something very rich. If we remember what that looked like before, right? Now we've got this, we still this super bright reflective. That really does look silver on the camera. I assure you it is not that silver in real life. That's just how reflective that is. That is catching like all the light, okay? Because that's how bright that metal is. Again, let's look, remember back in the product review video when I showed you that this is the kind of paint that comes out of a gold bottle of acrylic paint. So again, let's hold those next to each other. That's ridiculous, not even close, right? This is gold. Right? It's like you're painting, when they, when they call it liquid gold for a reason. It is like you're painting with metal. You can see how we've created our shadows and the wheels. Right? Let's flip it back over there. The interesting thing about this stuff is that with your inks, if you really want to, you could take a little of the ink, mix it in there. It will mix with an acrylic ink. And so, like, if you need to sort of darken it down a little bit, you know, create a little bit of a smoother line there, we want to kind of smooth out the wheel transition a little, we can do that. Um, I wouldn't, don't put it into your main sort of, uh, into your main pot of the, of, the, of the paint, but you can keep the acrylic separate and kind of mix them in another location. And yeah, you can get away with that. So, 
just cleaning up my edges here. And you can see that's where we end up. Where we end up with is a nice, bright, uh, very, very reflective gold that to my eye at least actually looks like gold. It looks like, you know, this thing is, it, it really is truly liquid gold. And you can see how by pushing those highlights up with the silver, you can get really extreme contrasts and get to the point where you're more like natural gold like that. Okay? So there you go. I hope that was helpful, both for thinking about uh, how you highlight your gold colors, as well as uh, using the Vallejo liquid gold in practice and thinning it down. Remember, what is the what are the secrets of the liquid gold? One, open the bottle for the most minimal amount of time possible. Put it onto a second palette. Mix in immediately some extra alcohol. You want 90% or better uh, alcohol content. Uh, keep your brush nice and wet with extra alcohol. Clean it regularly. Uh, and um, always make sure that you clean the brush itself with alcohol thoroughly. You can then wash them as normal with water, but always make sure your first step is with alcohol. You can use regular inks and shades over top of your acrylic, so you're good to go there. Um, one final note on these is that they do not take varnish very well. Um, so one other final challenge, you do not want to shoot at these things with, say, a matte varnish. If you do that, you will again knock the shine right out of them. So. Either you're going to not varnish the model, which really is fine in a lot of cases, or you're, what you would do is varnish this model, like paint everything except the gold, This is which is usually what I do. In this case, I was a little out of order just because I wanted to do this for the video. But normally my step is I paint the entire model except everything I'm going to use the liquid gold on. Once the model is done, I spray it with some uh, matte varnish real quick then I go in and paint the gold. This stuff's generally pretty tough, honestly. Um, like, I've, I've picked it up, I've handled these, I've used it a lot. I haven't rubbed any off or chipped anything. Now, I'm sure if you had, like, a metal model it was over and you dropped it, well, you know, F equals MA. Um, but so my advice is paint everything that is your acrylic paint first, spray a quick varnish over it, and then go in and do your liquid gold layer and all your highlighting. So... I hope that helps. I hope you found that interesting. And uh, as always, we'll see you next time.